Hey guys, thanks for the support on the last video. It did amazingly well. Since the Professor Oak challenge for this game is exceptionally long, I broke it up into pieces. This video is a continuation of this challenge. If you have not yet seen the first part, I recommend watching that part first, as this video is continuing from where it left off. So, let's get started with the rules real quick. But first, guys, only 0.1% of you are subscribed. That's insane. If you do enjoy the videos being put out, subscribe to the channel to stay tuned and like the video, because it really does help a small channel like me. Now, without further ado, let's get on to the challenge. There are only three rules with this Pokemon Oak challenge. First rule, we can only use this one game. Not an issue, since this is a ROM hack, so there really is only this one. Either way, I'm fine with this rule, and we will still prove that I'm a better trainer than Ash. Second rule, we will have to fill up our Pokédex as much as possible before getting a gym badge. Now, this may not sound like a big deal, but it is a massive pain. Imagine getting multiple Pokémon that don't get their final evolution until level 36. Now I'm stuck decimating the Pokemon in the grass to prove a point to the Pokemon community. I'm gonna feel like a bit of a dick. The last rule is pretty obvious. Just don't use any glitches. Pretty self-explanatory and expected. No need to go into further detail. Well, with that all done, we can now start the challenge. After catching the Ghastly, we move west of Saffron City and grab a protein and a tasty donut. Not sure how long that's been on the ground. A little west, and we meet a primate that takes our hat and actually wants the donut. But because it chases us and takes our hat, just out of principle we take it down with Venusaur. A little west again, and we meet Rocky and his Hitmonchan. He prides himself on being an excellent fighter. And then we beat them. In the Grand Prix tournament, we fight Team Rocket again on our way to fight Rocky. They go down with a bit more difficulty this time around. After getting to the finals, we fight Rocky and use a Pokemon we just caught against his prized Pokemon. We beat him with a couple of seismic tosses. After winning the tournament, we continue west where we arrive at a power plant. Here we can catch a couple of Pokemon. Here we caught Magnemite, Grimer, Muck. We have cleared this area, so next we travel south towards Diglett's cave. Here we can catch a couple more Pokemon. Doug Trio, Diglett. Along the way, we run into Team Rocket again, where they claim they have a new Pokemon. I guess they were new, but they were just the evolved forms. We keep traveling along Route 9 towards Fuchsia City, taking the underground path. Along the way, we can catch some more Mons. We get Nidoran. I get a little tired of catching Mons, so for a bit of change, we help another citizen of Kanto with their problems and I didn't just help for the quick claw reward. Lara hurt her arm and can't participate in the race. She works at the hilariously named Big P Ranch. So she asked me to race in her place. This translates into a refreshing minigame on my journey to catch them all. We proceed to the safari zone where the caretaker threatens to murder us with his thunderbolt revolver if we don't listen to his rules. Here I will waste several days trying to catch every Pokemon in this area. I mean, I actually could have done something useful with the amount of time I wasted here. Here we catch Rhyhorn, Tauros, Poliwag, Chansey. Taking a break, we travel deeper into the Savari Zone and encounter Team Rocket before the final house. They have the same Pokemon and go down again. Another win for us. Kangaskhan, Execute, Scyther, Doo Duo, Venonat. Next, we evolve female Nidoran to Nidorina. Next, we need to train our Pokemon a bit since we have a lot of Mons to train. But tis a trifle with the experience share. We evolve Doduo into Dotrio. But first, we head back to Celadon City for another Team Rocket encounter. Oh, what do you know? They lost again. Back to training. We still have a few more Pokemon that need to evolve. Magnemite to Magneton. Poliwag to Poliwhirl. Venonat to Venomoth. Rhyhorn to Rhydon. After evolving all the Pokemon possible, we can now take on the Pokemon Gym. So we travel back to Celadon City. Unfortunately, because Erica is afraid of me and is very sensitive about perfume, I am not allowed to enter the gym. So Team Rocket helps dress me up as a girl so I can beat Erica. Fairly. After battling the members in the gym, I eventually get to Erica. Even after realizing I am not a girl, she agrees to fight me. Tangle is a battle of attrition, but goes down due to repeated uses of Razor Leaf. The same thing happens to Weeping Bill. Eventually, Gloom goes down too with uses of confusion. Although, after Erica loses the battle, the gym catches on fire. When we help get the gloom out of the gym, Erica realizes how wrong she has been about us this entire time, and pretty much begs to give me the rainbow badge. I took the badge just to be nice to her. After claiming the fourth badge, I move back through Route 9 for my fifth badge. 
A little west of Fuchsia is Koga's gym. But first, to continue through the gym, I must solve the riddle on the statue. Inside the gym, I am able to catch one of the plenty of Voltorbs on the ground. Really quickly, we evolve the Voltorb we just got from the gym. Moving through the maze-like gym, and we stumble upon Aya, who talks a big game of ninjas being superior in battle. Well, I guess Pokemon are actually superior in battle because she lost pretty easily. Upon reaching the center platform, fog fills the room, and Koga appears next to me ready to battle. Koga has two Pokemon. First is a Venomath. This one can be a bit tricky since it knows Psy Beam, which is super effective against my Venusaur. My plan is to put it to sleep and damage it while it's asleep. Eventually, it goes down with this strategy. Koga's last Pokemon is a Golbat. While we stay with our Venusaur, our strategy is the exact same thing as we did previously. Put it to sleep, Leech Seed, and then Razor Leaf until it goes down. Four Razor Leaves later, and it goes down. After getting all the badges possible and helping out the Thunder Smash Revolver guy at the Safari Zone, we can now continue through the next segment of the story. Nurse Joy now asks us to deliver medicine to sick Pokemon across the bridge. We need the bike for the bridge and Nurse Joy gives it to us. After dodging bikers on the bridge, we give the medicine to the other Nurse Joy in Sunnytown. A little south of Sunnytown, we run into a Jinx with Santa Claus's boots. Yeah, I know. I don't even think it is near winter time. This storyline gets even more chaotic when a Lapras appears and asks if I want to meet him. Santa Claus. Arriving at the North Pole, we can catch a few Pokemon. Shelder, Seal, Cloyster. We meet Santa and give him his boot. As a reward, he gives us a Poke doll. Nice. Arriving back to Sunnytown, we travel along the beam path, and we catch some Mons. Ditto. Back in Sunnytown's Pokemon Center, we find a scientist who also wants a 10-year-old's help. We arrive in the digital world with the gimmick being that we need to use the arrows on the ground to get to the thieves. What? The thieves are Team Rocket? How can that be? Not surprisingly, we beat them. Cool. That was easy. Southwest of Sunnytown, we find an Eevee, and we return it to its owner, Mikey. After being all the brothers, they're so grateful that they give us a Firestone in return. A little west of Mikey is a Snorlax that we can catch, but we need the Pokey Flute from the hippie that wants free love with Snorlaxes. A bit of a weird kink. Using the Pokey Flute, we can catch the Snorlax for free love. Afterwards, we move west towards Dark City with the Yaz and Kaz unofficial gyms. Here we get another Team Rocket encounter. Inside the diner, they pop in to harass the diner owner to coerce him into giving the Kaz gym 30 free meals. We fright them to get a free meal for ourselves, and they go down pretty easily. Say what you will about Jesse and James, but they're pretty persistent. After the Team Rocket encounter, we move west again towards a circus. Melvin the Magician needs an assistant. For his act, he hypnotizes me and has us do his dirty work, wanting us to go to Route 12 and catch him an executor. Against our will, I should add. Battling my way through, we get to the forest inhabited by the executor. Eventually, we do find and catch an executor. After bringing the executor to the magician, his idea of a magic show is a Pokemon battle. No wonder why his assistant left him. After being the magician, we move through the executor forest and exit through the west side entering Route 12. A little north is Moss Green Village. Here we help a trainer evolve their Paris. Besides that, there is not much else to do here. We continue through Route 12, battling our way through. Neon Town has Casino, which means I will have to play the slots to grab some Pokemon. We are able to pick up a coin case here too. God damn it! We continue to spin the slots for a while. This might be the most tedious part of the challenge. We also sell a bunch of goods too so we can buy some coins. We decide to come back later and move west of Neon Town, towards Grandpa Canyon. Here we can catch a couple of Pokemon, including some fossil Pokemon. Here we can catch Geodude, Cubone, Graveler. Continuing through the canyon, we meet Butthurt, who gives us a pickaxe. With this, we can catch the fossil Pokemon. Using the pickaxe, we break a rock and then fall down the hole to catch some more Mons. Here we catch Kabuto, Omanite, Omastar. After exterminating the fossil Pokemon, Cubone reaches level 36. At level 36, it begins to evolve into Marowak, Aerodactyl. When you mine the rocks in the canyon, sometimes you can get evolutionary stones. So we use a Thunderstone we got to evolve Pikachu. We use a Leaf Stone to evolve Gloom into Vileplume. Using Water Stone, we evolve Poliwhirl to Poliwrath. After selling some of the pricey items we obtained from mining the rocks, we can now afford to buy Jatini from the casino. Then we name him Dave. From an egg we received from an Aerodactyl, hatches Togepi. Also, afterwards, Professor Oak updates our Pokédex. Then Misty takes it from me. We evolve Gloom to Blossom using a stone. Eventually, we find a Kabutops in the fossil den and we catch it. Heading back to the casino, we sell all the extras we got from mining, like a prospector. 
This was a lot easier than just playing the slots, as I already had to mine the rocks to find some Pokemon and evolutionary stones. Luckily, we were able to find a large amount of money to get the Polygon. Shit. Well, guess I gotta play the slots to obtain those two extra coins. After playing the slots for way too long, for two extra coins, we finally get our Polygon. Using the Leaf Stone, we evolve Weeping Bell into Victory Bell. Great, we are done in this area for now. So we can continue west along Route 12 until we stumble upon the Princess Festival. Misty is competing in the festival but thinks her water team isn't good enough and asks if we can take her place. Even though it's only Jessie in this tournament, I am including that towards the Team Rocket encounter. She loses pretty easily. Next we have a lot of side missions that don't progress the story but are entertaining nonetheless. We have to deal with a thieving farfetch to get the Stick of Truth. We meet an ambitious young kid whose goal is to see a Meowth not even a talking Meowth. We get surrounded by the police's K-9 unit for trying to help. A photographer wants a picture of my Pikachu for an elderly couple. I show him a Meowth and give him my favorite finger as I walk away from his pathetic ass. We take the Pokemon League admissions test and get a B on the Rin test. And we fail the practical test in the second battle. Side note, did not realize this until later, but since I don't have some of the Pokemon I battle with, I got three new Pokemon entries. Awesome! Next we arrive at a breeding house. A little to the west, they are happy to raise Pokemon for unsuspecting trainers. Either way, we don't care too much and just leave. The house next door, we meet a crazy chef who is willing to give us a berry if we show him his favorite Pokemon. Oh, and by the way, his favorite Pokemon is a goddamn Zapdos. Heading back into the breeding house, the couple has bolted and we find there is a staircase leading downstairs to a Team Rocket hideout. We have another Team Rocket encounter here and we win easily. South of the Team Rocket hideout, we meet Butthurt in the Route 20 Ferry. Butter informs us that Cinnabar Island has no gym and is just a resort, although there really is a gym there. Before arriving on the island, we need to get some new entries. Dave evolves into Dragonair, and then again into Dragonite. Finally, arriving at Cinnabar Island, we enter the inn, where the innkeeper informs us the Pokemon Lab is being attacked. Team Rocket is attacking the Pokemon Lab, and we take care of them pretty quickly, adding another encounter to the tally. Going back to the inn, we are given a clue as to where the gym is. With this new information, we look for our way into the volcano and find it in the springs. We find Blaine in the volcano and battle him three on three. Because of this challenge, it boils down to a level 55 Dragonite demolishing his level 42 Ninetales. As you can tell, this will be an easy gym battle. Nine Tails goes down after two wing attacks. The second Pokemon is Rhydon, and he goes down after one Razor Leaf from my Venusaur. His last Pokemon is Magmar against my Dave. Magmar also goes down after two wing attacks. This challenge makes gym battles a walk in the park. We obtained a raft from the old man after reminiscing about our mutual love for the sea. Using the raft on the sea, east of Cinnabar Island, we run into a new tentacool encounter, raising our Pokemon tally. Continuing through the sea, we find a rock tunnel connecting Cinnabar to Cerulean City. Battling my way through the tunnel, the tentacool evolves into Tentacruel. We exit the tunnel and immediately meet a vulture who preys on weakened trainers. She loses and blames it on her Pokemon. We find a telephone in the middle of the road and somehow we got a call from the Cerulean City gym leader, Daisy, who was happy to get me. They're looking for their sister, Misty. We find Misty in the middle of town, right next to Officer Jenny. We tell Misty her sisters are looking for her and she rushes off to the Pokemon gym. We arrive at the gym to find a 10 year old putting on a show for the town. During the show, Team Rocket invades the gym to stop it and take all the Pokemon. This might be the first time I'm rooting for Team Rocket. Unfortunately, we beat Team Rocket, but Misty stops her show and gives us a super rod for stopping them. With this little baby, we can now catch more Mon. Using the rod on the pond outside of the gym, we can now catch Horsey. We go through the rock tunnel and meet an old friend, Seymour, with the Clefairy fetish. Seymour goes with the Clefairy on the rocket. We also get a meteorite out the deal. Now we can actually use the raft and go south of Palatown. There are little side missions we could do, but we can't actually catch any new Pokemon there. So instead, we will just go battle the 8th gym leader. Arriving in Viridian, we see that there is a Team Rocket Grunt stationed right outside the gym. Before battling the 8th gym, we train Horsey to evolve into Seedra. Upon entering the gym, we see Butthurt lying on the ground. After talking to Butthurt, he informs us that a powerful evil Pokemon did this to him. The room then turns dark, and Jesse and James appear. Wow. Any already little respect I had for Butter is now gone, now knowing that he lost to those two. This gym battle is a bit odd, because it really is two separate battles back to back. The first battle, they have three completely different Pokemon. Machamp, Kingler, and Rhydon. First up is Machamp against my Venusaur. Because I can, I do Solar Beam. Solar Beam takes out Machamp in one hit, it also helps that I am over 
10 levels higher than my opponent. Next is Kingler, and this one is pretty straightforward. After a couple of Razor Leafs, it goes down. Next is Rhydon, and he goes down after one Razor Leaf. Now we have to fight the same four classic Jesse and James Pokemon, so they go down pretty easily. After losing, they blow themselves up and blast off again. I will end part 2 here after getting the 8th badge, and to make this part and the final part about even in length. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll try to make videos a bit more frequently now. See you in 12 weeks!